Congresswoman Ashley Henson. Good morning, Congresswoman, and thank you for the time. Good morning, Jeff. Great to be with you as always. Good that you took some time today, and I know the schedule. I mean, this is a, a good time to get out and meet people, but that wasn't really possible with the weather, and we appreciate you connecting with uh, constituents uh, through the phone, uh, at least this morning. Let's talk about this new Select Committee on China. What is it, and what do you hope is accomplished by that effort? Yeah, Well, absolutely. Communist China is our greatest threat, bar none, and I think we need to be very clear-eyed uh, as Americans about the threat that the CCP poses to us. Um, their ultimate goal, I believe, is to overtake the United States as the world's top economic and, of course, military power. And so um, the goal of our committee is to compete because we see this as kind of a new um, Cold War with China. We're going to be laying out our policy blueprints to make sure that we can address um, the wide range of threats from President Xi and from communist China. Um, we know China is spying on us, um, whether it's a, a Chinese spy balloon floating over our country, uh, gathering that sensitive intel, or um, the way I see it, 210 million Chinese spy balloons on American phones in the form of TikTok. So we need to put a stop to the CCP's espionage tactics, um, and that is what our committee is going to do, a fact-finding mission, and then present policies that we can actually pass so we can be competitive in the long term. This committee's membership, again, when it's a select committee, this is not part of the normal institutional structure. Talk about how that fits with the rest of the process in Congress. Right. So each uh, of us obviously have committee assignments. For instance, I am on the Appropriations Committee, but um, this committee was selected by the, in, in this case, the majority and the minority. So Speaker McCarthy is the one who appoints um, us as Republican members, and then Hakeem Jeffries decides who his members are. Um, and that is, um, I think, a, a good reflection of serious legislators on both sides of the aisle who want to present solutions that will actually be things that we can pass. So so our committee will have hearings. We're going to do interviews. We're going to go on that fact-finding mission, and we're going to recommend policies with the endorsement of our committee to the committees of jurisdiction. So whether that's a funding mechanism like an appropriator or um, a policy recommendation, for instance, on maybe um, energy and commerce or um, a defense policy that would need to go through a standing committee, that's what our recommendations will be, and then that's how we'll work that through the process. We did not get a chance to talk when the t this balloon was flying across the country, pulling in all sorts of data. What was your reaction, not only just as a member of Congress, but as a, a citizen, when you heard about this balloon? Obviously, you know things that we don't about some of this stuff, but uh, was the concern expressed by many Americans justified? Well, absolutely. And when I say that China is our greatest threat, I think it's very clear that this balloon was just one brazen provocation by the Chinese. Um, they are spying on us. Um, they're buying up our land. They're stealing our intellectual property, stealing our jobs. Um, so the way I see it, the balloon is a very visible reminder of that. But it's time for accountability here, and it's time to stand up for American national security and for the American workforce. And I think that's really why when you see the reaction from people who are frustrated about why it took so long to shoot that down, um, we wanted to see them make sure they weren't getting our, our military secrets. And how long have they been doing this before? Um, so so those are some of the questions that we have. Um, now it's very clear the Chinese know we have their balloon, um, and they, they know that we are going to do the analysis on what, what they are able to recover from the bottom of the, the ocean off the coast of South Carolina. Um, so we will no doubt learn a lot of things about the Chinese spy operation um, when we're able to analyze that and gather that intelligence. But um, it goes without saying, this is just the latest provocation, but they're in our they're in our communities, um, and they are on the ground literally here in Iowa and around the country spying on us, and we have to put an end to this espionage state that the Chinese Communist Party has executed. Congresswoman Ashley Hinson joining us live on News Talk 1540 KXEL. I have heard a lot of talk recently about our northern border. You have toured the southern border and talked about what a fiasco that is, but now I'm hearing that Vermont is being overrun by folks who are now finding that a porous way to come in. So in essence, while the attention's been paid by those who care about security, not the administration, on the southern border, apparently now the northern border is an issue. Let's talk about security of, uh, of the Continental 48. Right. And that's what this is. It's the administration that has not lifted a finger to secure our border. 
whether it's on the southern border or the northern border. This is about keeping Americans safe. And uh, they continue, in my mind, to turn a blind eye to the crisis that their policies have created. And um, we are going to continue to travel to the southern border telling that story. But I think it bears uh, repeating that um, the vulnerabilities in our border are being exploited by um, not only illegal immigrants, but by the cartels. Um, And I think we would be blind to say the cartels are only operating at our southern border. So um, we know that whether it's people on the terror watch list who have made their way across, uh, true criminals who have made their way across, and those are the ones we've been able to catch. Um, Ultimately, the the long-term influx of immigrants at either border illegally is unsustainable. Um, January was the 23rd consecutive month that our southern border had more than 150,000 illegal crossings. And to put that in perspective, obviously the population of Cedar Rapids is around 136,000. So just to, to think about that, the uh, more than the entire population of the city of Cedar Rapids trying to cross our southern border every single month for 23 straight months. Um, it has to stop. What can Congress do? Uh, you know, you're in the House. You now have a Republican majority. You have the power of the purse to some degree. Are there actions that you folks can take to try to force the administration's hand on this issue or because of the nature of it and the fact that Democrats have a majority in the Senate, uh, there are some limited options? Right, because this administration has made its policy very clear. They want an open border and they have enacted open border policies Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris should just take borders are off of her resume as far as I'm concerned, because they have not done anything uh, meaningful to to actually solve this crisis at our southern border. Um, What I think you'll see House Republicans do is through the appropriations process, uh, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas has to come before us to ask for money for their budget. We will hold him accountable and publicly put him on the record on their failures at the southern border and the northern border, because, again, this is about national security. And this border crisis has made its way to to our state in the form of drugs coming in our southern border, not to mention the influx of um, people here illegally. So um, that's what you'll see House Republicans do. We've also put forward plans that would actually fix and secure our southern border, building the wall. We have funding uh, allocated for that, and I think you'll see that in some of our policy proposals. Um, We also want to make sure the CBP is adequately funded, not seeing funds diverted as we have, for instance, under Democrats, where they wanted to take money away from the CBP agents and instead use it to replant grasses at the southern border that had been trampled by illegal immigrants. Um, that doesn't seem like a, a very good value to me to to be undermining our border security so we can have nice flora and fauna at our southern border. Congresswoman Ashley Henson, Republican from Marion, represents the Northeast Iowa District. That's District Number 2, and she joins us live on News Talk 1540 KXEL. E15, I swear this is an issue. The whole ethanol industry uh, it has to fight with the administration constantly. What are the current efforts that you're spearheading with regard to E15 and how that could impact Iowa's economy? Yeah, well, we've certainly seen the EPA, Jeff, uh, continue to drag its feet when it comes to ethanol. Um, the way I see it, ethanol should be front and center in the all of the above energy strategy that we've been talking a lot about. And you're hearing our Iowa delegation talk a lot about this. Um, so, again, what have we been doing in this space? Well, um, I led a letter with Senator Ernst urging the EPA to look at Governor Reynolds' request to make E15 permanently available year-round. I would ask that they grant that request um, because not only is it good in terms of options for consumers, it will drive down prices at the pump, but it's a homegrown, clean energy solution um, that will also help to bolster our fuel supply. Um, We've seen President Biden continue to sideline our domestic energy resources, whether biofuels or domestic oil production. So, Um, I think our job is to, again, provide options for consumers at the pump to lower those costs. And I'm going to keep calling him out at every turn until we're maximizing U.S. energy. And I think that um, starts with E15 year round. What do you think the likelihood is that given the tone of the administration and some on the progressive left that this will get some traction? Well, I, I'm hopeful because we do have a, bi, a bipartisan biofuels caucus and many members on the other side of the aisle have um, these kinds of uh, production facilities in their districts as well. 
So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get some bipartisan push to put pressure on the administration. Um, what's disconcerting was when I listened to President Biden in his State of the Union address say that he only believed we would be using oil and gas for the next uh, 10 years. Um, I think he's just out of touch and living under a rock if he thinks that's absolutely going to happen. Um, this administration has an unhealthy obsession with electric vehicles, and it's just not feasible to flip a switch on that overnight. We don't have the infrastructure. We can't afford to, as a nation, install that infrastructure overnight. Um, and instead, we should be focused on what do we have available right now, again, to maximize U.S. energy which when you look at what's happening in the geopolitical space, we absolutely should be prior prioritizing because it's a national security issue for us at this point. I feel for the people in Ohio with the train derailment, this mushroom cloud of toxicity. And I understand that bad things happen to good people every day across the country, and we cannot expect the national government in Washington to drop everything and go to each site of an incident. But it seems like this administration has been very tardy with regard to response on this. The Transportation Secretary going today only after President Trump was there yesterday. So in our remaining minute or two, uh, your thoughts when you see the administration's reaction to a catastrophe like that, which has affected the people of East Palestine, Ohio. Yeah, well, it certainly doesn't inspire confidence in Americans that their leaders will be there in a time of need. Uh, leadership is about showing up, and the Biden administration has failed to show up time and time again for Americans. I am concerned by the train derailment and the horrific aftermath that will um, have a lot of short-term and a lot of long-term impacts on that community, and my heart goes out to the residents of that community. But um, when it took Secretary Buttigieg weeks to even release a statement, and he's really only going to Ohio after the intense pressure to do so, not because it was the right thing to do or there was a need in that community. Uh, he needs to be there for people who are hurting and scared. Um, and so I think that, again, um, this is a prime example of uh, another example of the Biden administration really being out of touch with the needs of Americans. Congresswoman, I thank you so much for the time, as always. We look forward to these conversations every month. Safe travels along the roadways, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Jeff. Congresswoman Ashley Hinson of Iowa's 2nd Congressional District, and she joined us live in the news line on News Talk 1540 KXEL, where Iowa comes to talk.